All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to another Elevator Parts video. Today, we're taking a look at Dover Traditional. Now, this is another fixture I've had multiple requests to do a wiring tutorial on, so I will be showing you guys how to wire up one of these buttons. In addition to showing you how to wire it, we're gonna take a look at the actual buttons themselves and see why, when you press them like this, why do they feel like this? So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so you can see we have two buttons here to work with. We've got this kind of square button with these interesting arrows. I've never actually seen these arrows before on a Dover Traditional. Over here, this is a more common button right here. You simply have these kind of, these arrows with the little indent on the bottom. Now you can see this button here is already wired up and I'll show you why I brought this fixture out later. Now the main focus of the video is going to be on this button because it's not wired up yet. So if we take a closer look at it, you can see the camera back there. There you are, that's, that's you right there. But anyway, so we have the arrows here and we all know and love these buttons. They have a very distinct feel to them. They almost feel like they're touch sensitive because you barely have to touch them to make them activate, but they're not actually touch sensitive. And for the rest of it, you can see here, we've got this nice little font, use exit. Here's the little fire sign. And then on the top, in case of fire, elevators are out of service. So let's go ahead and turn it around and see how it looks on the back. So here are the backs of the Dover traditional buttons. And you can see they're quite simple. There's not a whole lot to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull one of these off and break this button down. Now, something I like about these Dover fixtures is that you have all these neat little wires which have all these clips on them. And all you really have to do is just pull on them and they come out. And you can see each clip here has a spot where it can clip onto another piece here. And then there's this little bit that hangs off so you can add more to it. It makes it super easy to wire these things up. Once you remove the screws, you can simply pull out the button. So this is what the button mounts into. It's got these two little spots for screws here. And then we just have a standard hole right there. So if we take a look at the button itself, you can see it's quite small, quite compact, very simple. You got some, I don't know what this is on here. It's like some blue gunk or something. But anyway, you have the button itself right here that presses down. And if you pull this plastic piece off right here, you can actually take out the button. So here we have the actual button itself. And it has this little plastic cover on it. You can see there's like the, uh, the, little, the little protective cover. And this one's actually cracked a little bit. And then we can see here, there's the arrow and it's got this blue gunk on it. But you can see it's quite interesting. You've got these two pieces here on the bottom, which is actually what presses down on the contact. And that's kind of why when you press these buttons, they feel like they almost press kind of like this. And that's because they do. So this is the part here that's on like the pivot. It would sit like right here. And then when you press in, it kind of presses down on an angle like that. That's why it's not like a direct, you press straight down, it kind of presses almost easier on one side than the other. And that's kind of why. Very interesting piece for a button though. This is kind of interesting. And let's go ahead and take a look at the base here. So this is the base. These little round pieces sit on these holes right here. And then this side here simply presses down onto the two metal contacts, which are right here on either side. And what those do is when they press down, they complete this circuit right here. You can see these two switches on either side are broken. And then when that button presses down, it simply presses these down and completes the circuit. And if you look closely, you can see how little the gap is between the contact there. That's why they don't press very much because you barely have to press them down to make them make a contact. And then in the middle here, we have the lamp socket. Now the lamp socket's kind of interesting. I've never seen anything like this. So here's another lamp socket that's not in use right now. But you can see here, we've got this one wire and this is what would actually, you can see here, it's plugged into the contact. And then you just have a little spot on the inside for a bulb. And this is what the bulbs look like. They're, I'm not sure exactly what kind of bulbs these are, but you can just slide them in there and they, they lock into place. And then the other part of the contact, cause you know, you may notice there's only one wire. How does the other side make a connection? Well, that's where this piece comes in. This is the actual clip. And you can see here, it clips down on this metal piece and there's the other connection for the other side of the bulb. So to put your button back together, you'll simply just place your little plastic piece back in here like this. Make sure your cap is on. You see there's these two holes which line up with this part right here. Simply press down on it to push it on there and it holds itself pretty well. And you can see the button is now put back together. All right, so let's go ahead and get into how we're going to wire this thing. Before we get started with wiring, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways you can wire this because this button you can see here, it has the lamp sockets, it has these wires, it's all connected together, it's got the bulbs in it, it's all good. This thing is actually wired up completely as is, and that's how I got it. Now, not everyone's gonna have a conveniently wired button here. 
And that's why I have the other button. Now this button here is already wired up. When I got this button, Andrew gave this thing to me. It didn't, he didn't have any of the lamp sockets that came with it. Now I have some now, but at the time I didn't have any of the lamp sockets to put in. And I wanted to use some LEDs to light this thing up. So what I ended up having to do was kind of place my own LEDs across and solder them to the contact here. I didn't really want to do that, but without any lamp sockets, I kind of had no choice. And the wiring is going to be exactly the same here as I'm going to show you today, but this is just for those of you who don't have any like lamp sockets and still want to wire it. Here's kind of an alternate method that you could use. Now, obviously this requires a little bit more creativity. You got to be able to solder and, and put the wires on there and stuff. But I just want to show you guys another method of, of doing this without the lamp sockets. Now that's not what we're going to be doing today. We will be using the lamp sockets in this video, but if you don't have them, here's just a little, uh, just a little idea of what you could do. All right, so back to our little button here. Now what I'm going to do is remove all the wires and all the lamp sockets and and we're gonna start this thing from scratch. Here we have the base buttons with nothing on them. We just have the metal piece for the lamp socket and our two contacts. So before we get started, you're gonna to wanna to kinda of gather some materials. The first thing you want to decide is what sort of light are you gonna use? In my case, in the end of this video, I'm gonna be using the incandescent bulbs, but I am gonna show you how you can use an LED in this as well. Cause not everyone has these, these incandescent bulbs. And you can actually put an LED in this thing. I'll just show you how to do it. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is decide what your voltage is, what kind of battery pack you're gonna use. For instance, I will most likely use a three volt LED. So I'll be using a AA battery pack. So you just wanna figure out what kind of LED you're using, what kind of bulb you're using, and just gather the, the corresponding power supply. The wiring is gonna be the same no matter what you use. Okay, so if you're going to be using an LED for this project, I'm gonna show you how you can put in an LED into one of these little lamp sockets. So of course here we have our LED, and this is a green one, it's three volts. And here's our little lamp socket. Now one thing that's important to note, you see there's four little pins here. And the two on this side and the two on this side correspond to one connection. And that's important because you wanna put your LED in there and make sure you know the polarity so when we wire this up, you can put positive and negative on the correct spots. So what you'll wanna do first is take your LED and just note what the negative side is and that's the side that's flat on your LED. So you can see here, that's the flat side, so that's negative. And I'm gonna make that on this wire here. So we wanna make sure that negative side is on the left here. Bend out your LED like this, poke it in here like this. You can see it just kinda sits in there behind these metal pieces. And if you have to trim the metal pieces, that's a good idea is to trim these shorter. I'm not actually, like I said, I'm not actually gonna be wiring this with LEDs. So you might wanna cut the metal pieces off so it sits closer to the bottom so it's not sticking out so far because when you push it in here like this, if you have it too close to the button, when you press in on it, you're just gonna see a green dot in the middle and it's gonna look really weird. But that's how you would put an LED into one of these. Now in my case, like I said before, I'm gonna be using these nine volt little bulbs. So I'm just gonna slide it in there and, and we're good to go. Now for the wiring, the sockets here, all you have to do is just slide your sockets onto the clip. Super simple like that, you're done. And then you have these two wires on either side. Now what I like to do with these is just choose a contact. So we have two contacts and I'm just gonna take one and slide it onto one side, just like this. So you can see here, we have our contact here and our wire connected here. Now that the lamps are hooked up, all we have to do is connect our two buttons together to a common. I have these little uh, extra wires here, which are very useful, but in my case, I need to be able to hook up to a battery. So I actually have this extra wire that has two connectors and a little end here. And I'm actually gonna use this to connect my battery pack to. Now, if you don't have one of these, you may only have these wires. You can still get away with it, because what you can do, you can actually take the wire and kind of push it on here and then slide this down on it and it'll clip down on the wire. You can just do that and you can see it attaches the wire with this. So what you wanna do is connect the other end of your contact on both. So in this case, this one and this one together. And this is going to be our positive of our connection. When it comes to working with incandescence, there's no polarity. And that's why I said, make sure you know which side is positive and negative on your bulb here, because that's gonna determine where you put your positive and negative. So if I said that your L the LED was negative on this side, I would actually want this to be the negative because that's the negative side. And then these would be the positive. So now that I've got this connected here, simply just going to connect my battery to it. 
So we've got this side of the socket complete, but we still have this other side here. So I've got another wire here, and I'll just go ahead and show you how that little clipping mechanism works. So we can place this in here. I'm gonna expose a little bit more of the wire on this. So just using some wire strippers here. I'm gonna expose a little bit more. Just going to put that wire inside and then press down on it and you can see it's nice and connected there. And that's just another way you can do it. It's super simple, easy to do. And then all that's left to do is just hook your battery up. So we're just gonna do that. So now if we look at the front of the button and we give them a press, look at that. They light up and they look really nice. That's why I love incandescent because this is exactly how this button was supposed to look. They were supposed to have incandescence in it and that's how I like to keep it. All right, so that is going to conclude this video on how to wire a Dover Traditional. Hope you guys learned something from it. Hope you followed, uh, you were able to follow through on it. If you have any questions, any comments, any ideas, stick them down in the comments below. I'm, I'm always open for feedback. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.